Hello, Bill Winston here, and welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, we as a church have work to do, and quite frankly, a little time to do it in. So what we have to do is realize that we got to be strong. I mean, we're coming up against things in the last days that no generation before us has come up against. But we're going to have to be strong and not weak. We're going to have to stand in faith, and I mean be able to put on that full armor of God and, 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 and so forth. Here's what I believe. Before we leave this earth, the church is going to be so attractive until everybody going to want to be a Christian. Now what's been ailing your body, the anointing that's in you can actually heal your body. Or somebody can lay hands on you and you'll recover. Or you call for the elders of the church. They'll anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save or heal the sick. The Lord will raise him up and have been in his sins and be forgotten, forgiven. And I'm just saying, notice, he can quicken your spirit, quicken your body. Guess what? He can quicken your mind. He can make it so you like, uh, let's say Gideon. Gideon was, he knew he was stupid and he raised, he got a hold of God. The Bible says the spirit of God came on him and now he could lead an army. Now, if he can do it with Gideon, he can do it with you. Come on now. So I'm saying God will quicken your spirit, your soul, and your body. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, please. And the very God of peace what? Sanctify you what? Holy. I pray God that your whole what? Spirit come on. Soul come on. And body be what? Preserved. Blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when he delivers you, he said in in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 19, he said, listen Moses, I'm going to send you on down there. He said, I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. But I'm going to stretch out my hand and I will smite Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in the midst thereof and after that he will let you go and get this I'm going to give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and when you it'll come to pass when you go you will not go empty every woman shall borrow of her neighbor of her uh, sojourn in her house jewels of silver jewels of gold so forth and so on so what am I saying spirit soul and body quicken But redemption is not complete without divine provision. That you will never, you will never meant to be let go without some moolah. Now the things of God are consistent right throughout the Bible. Now, here is what's happening. Moses had to go down and get those people out of there. Jesus, when he came, he came up out of that tomb. He did open combat with Satan. This, he, he defeated him. If, as a man, he defeated him. And then what happened is now he then goes up to the, to the mercy seat of heaven and goes right into the presence of God. I'm talking about being born again and going right into the presence of the Father. Because once you're born again, you're clean. You have been made righteous. And he put that blood on the mercy seat and the blood cries out to the Father, not guilty. And everybody in here, because of that blood, once you plead the blood, then once you come through the redemption that the blood has purchased for you, you are no longer guilty. Say amen to that. Now, in this... Moses had to lead him out. But my point to you is, is he said over in Isaiah 61 and verse 2, he started with the vengeance of the Lord, of God. Now, he says vengeance. So what I did for you is I looked up the word vengeance. It doesn't mean revenge. It has nothing to do with some kind of hate or some kind of emotional resentment or revenge. But it's a necessity of punishing offenders proceeding from a heart 
of justice. The, <laughs> the necessity of punishing offenders coming or proceeding from a heart of justice. Now, because many of the church have not understand vengeance, they have been victims. Now understand, it is a mystery. Say mystery. The vengeance of the Lord had to be with Moses. Now Moses goes down there to Pharaoh to let my people go. Now at first Moses didn't want to go. He knows how powerful Pharaoh was. And God said, no, Moses, so let me demonstrate something. Put your hand in your bosom. Put it in there. He said, pull it out. It was leprous. He said, whoa. He said, put it back in there. Put it back in there. Pull it out again. It was whole. Mm. So now Moses is seeing something that's changing his attitude about what he's got going for him. Now look at Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. And he said this, he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Look at Isaiah chapter 5 and verse uh, 13, please. I'm just, I'm giving you this now because we're going somewhere. He said, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have what? No knowledge. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 5, please. You see, God's people have not had any knowledge. Wise, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Look at verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, it's because your strength is small. Now, if your strength is small, how do you get it stronger? Knowledge. Can't you see? Revelation makes you strong. And God's people have not had people who've been sent who can teach so that their people can get revelation so that they can stand before the pharaohs of this hour and tell them that... people go. Now, if you don't have God with you, then you have not the greater one in you. But if you got the greater one in you, I'm telling you, you can stand before any force that Satan or Pharaoh can put up and put him down. Now, how far down do you want him to come? Look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. Over in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13, he said this. He said, but to whom, what, to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now this is God talking to Jesus who's been raised from the dead. Sit on my right hand, the father says, until I make your enemies your footstool. Now wait a minute. Jesus is the head of the church. So head, you sit here. Your body is down in the earth. Now, what I'm going to do, I want you to stay here till I make Satan your footstool. So your feet are not in the head. The feet are in the body. You are the body. So Satan is going to be put 
under your feet. Yes, this is how far down he's going to go. And it's fulfilling of the prophetic word that God said to Eve and Adam that your, his, your feet going to bruise his head. You see, you got to understand that all this is prophetic. That you've been called for such a time as this. If you didn't have what it takes, you wouldn't be sitting up in here. And I'm saying, you've got so much in you till you can face a burning, fiery furnace and say, the God that I serve, He will deliver me. Now you can see that if you've got that kind of knowledge, it's going to change your attitude and your behavior. Because when they say, I'm taking Bibles out of school, you can say, no, you're not. See, and you can't say, no, you're not, if you don't have enough knowledge. But now you're about to get knowledge. Some of y'all looking at me like you're scared. Listen here, now you're about to get knowledge. You're going to be like Esther. How Esther stood before the king. Esther didn't want to go. She said, look, look at Mordecai, Uncle Mordecai. If I go before the king, king, now you know, if he didn't invite you into his chamber, you can get your head cut off. He said, Esther, now look here, girl. If you don't go, God's going to deliver us some other way. Didn't he say that? Esther, what did she do? She fasted. She fasted for uh, three days. Then put on her royal apparel, kind of like me. She put on her royal, don't, don't hate, participate. Put on her royal apparel. And she went and stood before the king. But what happened? When you do that with no fear, the anointing kicks in. And one of the aspects of the anointing is favor. See, but you cannot fear. See, I don't want to see the look on your face that I see on there now. Because you got to have a look that you're happy to be there. Say amen to this. And I'm saying you stand before them and the demonic system of the world will start bowing. But that's why it's going to transfer. But it's not going to transfer to a bunch of weak Christians that are crying and belly aching about what color the carpet is. In here, we're strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This is no time for a bunch of belly aching and a bunch of weak Christians. This time, this hour is going to be an hour of God's power. And God has said it and made it so and chose you to do it. Now you can fold up and turn back on this mission if you want to. And God will get somebody else. But you will lose that reward. See, I'm, I'm, I'm through fooling around with a bunch of Christians that don't want nothing, don't want to go nowhere, don't want to have nothing, and don't want me to have nothing. We are going to put every work of Satan under our feet. I got, I got something. I just got in the spirit. Stand up and just stomp just for a minute. Just, just stand up and just stomp for a minute. All right, that's it. That's it. Sit down. And we're going to be pulling as one army. The Bible says over in Joel jo jo chapter 2, they will not break rank. You got a neighbor in the hospital, a brother or sister in the hospital, you're going to go and say, where is he? Get, take some of the saints over there and raise them up. Raise them up. Don't be pointing a finger at them. Stand in the gap for them. This is not a time for a bunch of weak Christians. We got work to do and a short time to do it. 
Now what Christians think, they think they're going to go to heaven and God and all this is going to be a mess and God's going to jerk them out of here right on time. That is garbage. And it has made the church weak. When we leave here, we're going to be uh, so attractive until everybody want to be in the church. Watch this. And you'll not be ashamed to say I'm a Christian. Some of you right now, you will not even, well not you, but some Christians will not even bow their head and bless their food because they're in public. You are intimidated. You, you gonna let the devil tell you, you can't bow your head and bless your food? No longer. No longer. They better be, they better watch it because you just may stand up and say, hey, I'm going to bless everybody food. Hold on just a minute. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. These pig feet are blessed. He goes down, sends Moses down there. Look what he says in Exodus 7, 1. He tells Moses this. The Lord said unto Moses, see, I've made you a God to Pharaoh. God to him. Whatever he can pull, you got something better. He went over and on over further in that same chapter. And he went over here and it says that the Lord spake unto Moses in his ear and said, Now when Pharaoh shall speak to you and say, Show me a miracle, thou shalt shall say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it's going to become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh. And they did so as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down. Before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their what? Enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became a serpent. But Aaron's rod did what? Swallowed up their rods. That's what Jesus did. He swallowed up sin. Watch this. And then turned back into a rod. So I'm here to tell you right now that they do have some power. But the greater one is in you. The greater one is in you. Notice Moses' attitude had to change about Pharaoh. He had to be willing to stand up toe to toe and let him know, this is what I'm going to do, homie. And this is, this, 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 this is it. I'm not bowing anymore to your, your evil government. And now let's go on over to Exodus chapter nine and let's just see what happened over there. And they took ashes of the, of the furnace. And stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven, and it became a boil, 
breaking forth with blands or blands upon man and upon beasts. And what is that? It's inflammation. People, a lot of people suffer from that today. Eating the wrong foods, inflammation of the organs. And as a result of that, first thing that happens, resistance goes out. People get subject to stuff. And that's a part of the curse. So notice, the magicians who was trying to curse him got cursed. And I'm here to tell you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Watch this. And every tongue that tries to send out a curse against you is going to be condemned. You can't curse what's been blessed. You know witchcraft affects you ever again. See, it affects the mind. Makes you think you're sick. Makes you think something's going to happen to you. Make that, that's, witch, that's, that's, that's a spirit of the devil. Cast that thing down. Cast down that imagination. God said that you're going to be protected. So when you're divinely positioned, you're divinely protected. Nothing can touch you. Touch not my who? No. Put it up there. Psalm 105 verse 14. He suffered no man to do them what? Wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So I'm here to tell you, God's going to make it so they can't touch you. Now here's Pharaoh. And Pharaoh stayed Going after Moses, right after he got released, because Pharaoh finally let him go. But he made one mistake. He went after him. And look what it says here. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, you not, stand still now and see what? Salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, you'll see them no more again. Forever. Notice what he did. He decreed what was going to be done. You're not going to see him anymore. And what he said, the Lord shall do what for you? Fight for you? Hold your peace. In other words, don't you dare try to get revenge. Don't you dare try to do it. If you do it, you cut off that anointing. Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 30, please. And look what he says. He says, For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongs to me, and I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall do what? He's going to judge his people. So what am I saying to you? Uh-uh. He's going to make it so they can't touch you or your family. Do you believe that? Not only that, whatever the devil has done to you, God's going to reverse it. Amen. Now, look what he says over in Ezekiel chapter 33. And he want to make this clear because God is a God of love. He said, say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked should turn from his way and live. They're harassing you. God will warn them, say, quit it. He'll give them a dream, quit it. He'll give them some kind of divine providence and say, stop that. And then all of a sudden something's going to happen. I mean, he's going to give them this definite sign that they're doing the wrong thing. And if they keep harassing you and try to block you, from your destiny, God will either torment him. When you are divinely positioned, you're divinely protected. I mean, I remember when we started Lake of Pulaski, when we started here in Chicago on the west side, where we started, I mean, there was shooting, so forth and so on. But we started right in the middle of that. Divinely protected. I mean, <laughs> it, it happened to be that, it, matter of fact, we were being used by God to run drug dealers out of the whole place. 
Now, I'm not saying we did it, but we had a lady who came and believed God and took a, some blessed oil that I gave her and poured it down the middle of the street. At, they stopped selling drugs on the street. I mean, it, it disappeared. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that once you're divinely positioned, you're divinely protected. That becomes your jurisdiction. Your neighborhood is your jurisdiction. Come on, where you go to work, your jurisdiction. And everything that the enemy has planned, you can keep it under your foot. Praise God. Well, until next time, this is Bill Winston saying we love you.